So what these green shoots really mean for the market is that we're close to the bottom of the, of the price cycle. And obviously from a, a buying perspective, that means that you know now is a fantastic time to buy a house, probably a better time than any time since COVID began. And uh, from a selling perspective, it means that more buyers are coming out of the work and coming to the market. So the odds of getting your house sold right now are greater than they were uh, six months ago. I think buyers are definitely recognizing that it, it is the bottom of the market and more of them are coming back in. However, I think high interest rates are, are probably affecting you know, some buyers, um, obviously, their ability to come and buy the house that they want, but also perhaps a little bit of uncertainty around those costs. My uh, my advice to buyers would be that you've got to look at the cost of the of the interest interest through this whole entire lifetime of the asset, not just in the next two years. Obviously, if you can't afford it, then you can't think of it that way. But provided it's comfortable and you can afford it, you know, buying at the bottom of the price cycle. Uh, rather than the top of the price cycle, but with higher interest rates, it's favourable because when interest rates come down, you know you will do much better financially from buying at the bottom of the of the price cycle. So there are a lot less properties on the market now than there was a few months ago. Part of the reason for that is seasonal because we're going into winter, but this year we have seen a 30% decline in the amount of listings coming to market over what would normally happen at this time of year. And of course, um, part of the reason for that is that sellers are, are uh, aware that we are nearing the, the bottom of the cycle. And I think a lot of people are making a decision not to put their house on the market uh, because they feel like it's the bottom of the market. And I can understand that logic for sure. Um, what I would say is that, you know, we've got, we had 2,500 sales to the end to March 31 for the financial year. Um, the long-term average in Wellington, that's averaged across so, you know, 20 years of data, booms and busts, the long-term average is 4,000. So for us to get back to the, the, just the average amount of sales, we need a 60% increase in volumes. And that's, that's the average for booms and busts. So, so I think people need to understand we could have a lot of volume come back into the market without seeing sustained capital gains. And the reason for that is because not only are there a lot of buyers on the sidelines, there's a lot of sellers on the sidelines as well. So they can actually come in and meet each other and you can get a, a significant increase in the amount of houses sold without prices rising or any sort of sustained multi-year period of capital gains. Uh, obviously in the short term, prices will, will jump around, they'll fluctuate, uh, but I think we could see a lot more houses sold without capital gains. So what does that mean for sellers? It means at the end of the day, you know, if you have a need to sell, a reason to sell, um, then I would focus on that rather than thinking, speculating on prices being higher in one to two years and focus on what it, what it is you want to achieve by selling. And if the reason for sale is something that's important to you, then I would just get it done and wouldn't worry too much about what I'm going to do in the short term. Yeah, economists seem to have a consensus out there that we are at the top of the interest rate cycle. Um, of course, this is largely going to depend on inflation. You know, the um, Reserve Bank has been fighting inflation with the higher interest rates. Uh, there are signs that inflation is coming down. And I think what really is going to influence the future is how high and for how long inflation stays persistent and whether or not the Reserve Bank has done enough uh, to get it under control. We've also seen, uh, you know, the, the Reserve Bank start to relax some of the uh, loan to value restrictions that they've been putting on banks. So uh, providing credit to more investors and to more first-time buyers is certainly a real positive sign for the market. And uh, we haven't seen back, uh, the Reserve Bank do that for a long time now. Uh, I would say that the investment market has been weak for many years. And actually the boom, the, the, the last part of the boom was really driven by first-time buyers. And so when we look at actually the amount of investors that are in the market, with the tax changes, the Healthy Homes Act, the extra regulations on landlords, uh, and also just the, you know, the general uh, sort of uh, malaise in that part of the market, it's really hard to see that making a big difference in the investment market in the short term. But I think any uh, change in the access to credit is very positive for the marketplace. And I would be stomaching the higher interest rates and, and, and just hold through it because we are at the top of the cycle uh, and, and you know, lower interest rates are coming. So if you can afford it, take advantage of the lower prices now. If I was a seller and I was sitting on the sidelines uh, waiting for the market, what I'd be thinking about right now is my reasons for sale. Because I think at the end of the day, if you've got a really uh, important reason for sale, then what the market's doing 
shouldn't come into it. Um, if I'm worried about whether I can sell my house in this market, then uh, right now we are getting great turnouts to open homes. Uh, because stock levels are low, we are getting multi offer situations again. So I think now is a good time to put your house in the market if you've got a strong reason to do so.